if you're an artist and you know art history, this is a very like impressionistic way of building out. Let's think about how detailed we want the grass to be. We could go like really simple with it, with just like some like leafy bits here and there. And then you could accentuate the highlights on those by just going one color up. And placing little things like that around. My grass that I do in Insignia is kind of interesting. Uh, the way that I handle it is start with a color, say it's this darkest color, and I draw my blade of grass. And I take the highest parts of that blade of grass and I highlight them like this. And then what I do is I create a shadow underneath it. And I might even like cut off a visible bit of the grass. Um, so that's like a blade, right? Then what I might do is like have another one. Again, highlight the tops and be like decisive about where you stop, right? Now the next thing is I would have like another like layer, right? That this falls into that's darker. And then in that layer that's darker, the bright color that I'm using at the very top is the middle color of the layer above it. Does that make sense? The highlight color is this, but in here the hi highlight color is this. Right? So I'm progressively moving down my palette, my greens, as I work my way down visually in the space. And that works obviously in the opposite way as we go up, the whole space gets dominated by this middle color that was, well, it was the middle color of the blades down here. And so now this becomes the body and now the highlight color is one even brighter than that. You see that? And you reinforce always with the shadow color. So that's how you keep that distinction. And so you can very clearly see the blades. That's like the cool part about it is that I'm still making a lot of effort to like show you the distinct blades of grass because it's playing on that contrast again, right? It always comes back to contrast. I wanna see the edges. So I have to have a bright color next to a dark color, right? And in this case, it's context dependent. So this color is so bright that this color here feels like the shadow next to it is like three shades brighter than this. And this is three shades brighter than this. Now you want to be very sparing with how you use those highlights, but that's the basics of it. But if I wanted to do like trees, it's almost exactly the same process, just with a different like shape and just more of them. I do the same thing just out instead of up. So, so this is my my branch, my like a uh, bunch of uh, leaves and stuff. And assuming that I'm working on a black background because this is like inside of a tree or something like that, um, I draw my like silhouette or whatever, and then I just like pick a color that's brighter than what I've got here, and I start outlining new leaves. And you really want to establish like a style of like what what is your quintessential leaf going to look like so that you can then use that as like the master leaf for the rest of the leaves. You can do it a bunch of different ways, right? You can start this way and just like build up brighter and brighter shapes, um, totally valid. The other thing you can do is do it just by like um, more abstraction. So you just draw like where you want the light to be, right? Majority wise, and then build out from there. Right, so let's just say we want this to be our branch uh, and we like this distribution of, of, of um, you know, where the shapes are and where the colors are. And this is one of those things that if you're an artist and you know art history, this is a very like impressionistic way of building out. Impressionism, I think, is actually kind of like 
oddly related to pixel art. It's something that I don't think gets appreciated very much. So what is impressionism, right? What is the, what is the like characteristic factor? It's taking the thing, right? That you're trying to portray and thinking about what happens when you have no detail, which is very similar to what happens when you have very low resolution, right? And it's where can I put my light and my points of contrast to tell you as much as I can about this thing in as little detail as possible. Like in this painting, this edge right here and this shadow tells us so much about this image. It gives it so much depth. You could think about doing the same thing with a one pixel outline uh, in pixel art. It's very, very similar. So having a limited color palette and trying to find details in very, very sort of almost abstracted ways. You're almost looking with squinted eyes at the thing. And that's kind of how I think when I'm building out some of this stuff. Like this doesn't look like anything, but it will when I decide to place those key pixels, right? And coming back to it again, pixel art is about images edited on the pixel level. That's where it all comes down to, on the single pixel level. So, as I'm drawing this, well, this like uh, bush, uh, I'm taking the same principles that I took from this, from these leaves, where I've got my highlight, right? And it's right next to a darker color. Same thing here, highlight right next to a darker color. And I can flatten it out or just keep the edge. Depends on what you want to do. Uh, in this case, let's highlight some edges. And obviously, as you get to the very edge of your color ramp, you don't have any colors you, go, you can go further down into, but that's a good thing. The fact that the lowest or darkest leaves have the least amount of colors in them because there's only two colors left, like that's good. Telling the viewer that those pixels are less important. Those leaves are less, less salient. And instead you're saying, look at these ones that have like five colors associated with them. And all I'm doing, all I'm doing is just picking out shapes where I've got negative space, right? Okay, I've got some space here. I'll put some lines there. Maybe I want to eat into some of this space to reinforce the contrast here. Same thing over here. You know, this looks like a good place to put two leaves. So there's one leaf, there's two. Let's highlight this, <clears throat> this here. We'll erode this to get some shape, make it a bit darker. And then maybe come up under here with a dark, darker color. Maybe here as well, a couple pixels. And then I'm noticing, okay, I want to use this, this green now as my darker color. So we can come up under here and do the same thing. using the dark color to isolate or to, to make more distinct the shape above it. And you can see like, this is slowly becoming very visible, right? Maybe this will like de determine like what's gonna be in our scene, right? I'm letting it sort of gestate on its own. You don't have to do that. You can be really deliberate if you want. It depends how much time you've got really. It's like, if you need to make this game in like a weekend, then Sure, like draw some trees, get out of there. But like, if you've got time, you know, maybe like just creating something out of the aesthetic kind of like, just search for nice, pretty shapes will get you something that looks good no matter what. The other huge factor that's like uh, really often overlooked, I think, is that it's really, 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 really easy to get lost if you're afraid to put pixels onto the screen. As in, if you sit here and go, uh, what, uh, I can't, and you sort of like get like sensitive about what you're doing, then you don't have anything to judge, right? But if you start and you actually put stuff on there into the canvas and you're actually like creating shapes, even if they're bad shapes, in fact, especially if they're bad shapes, then at least you have a way of validating them. You can say, oh, these shapes are bad. But worrying about 
whether or not the shapes that you haven't put down yet are gonna be bad is useless. So don't do that. Don't start slow because you're not confident. Start fast. And get the get the failure like out of the way. And it's not embarrassing. Like, why should you be embarrassed if you're a beginner? You know? Anyway, that's how I do bushes. Hope that works. Does that work? Looks a little, it's a little messy. I could clean it up. Where it looks messy, I think, is where you see shapes that are ambiguous. So like, um, you know, maybe this here could be a little darker. You want to be able to really see the like, actual what is leaf and what is not and you can use that darker shade to come in here and just reinforce a little more we could we could brighten it up maybe uh, let's see if we can do that so interesting opportunity to use the shader tool shader tool is amazing basically you go ink Shading if you're in a sprite grab the whole ramp of the color that you want Make the brush really fat flip it with X. So now you have a big Spotlight Searching for a criminal and just like go I think I want to go down one Now the whole thing is like a tone brighter or as many tones as you want and Actually, you can do that if you want to be really sneaky you have like a bunch of grass right I did this I did this personally in, in insignia pretend this is a lot like a really big field of beautiful grass right I go through and I just like highlight some of the grass and like put low lights in some of the grass and it makes the lighting look way more varied a better example would be it works especially well when you've got like very noisy textures like this because you can't see the shape of the circle that I used to paint it. That's the trick. I mean, I suppose you could use like a, I suppose you could use the spray to do the same thing. I don't know how that would work. There you go, I guess it does work. But you would see the dots, like um, the point of using a circle is that it uniformly lights everything that it touches up one shade. Um, the, the thing you have to understand about the shader brush is that the mark that you leave, right? Everything that I touched went brighter, but now I've created a new point of contrast between what was in that stroke and what's not. So you're actually adding detail every time you stroke. It's not just, you know, flipping it and then going down doesn't make it, doesn't, it's not an undo button, you know? You're creating more details. It's only an undo button if you go exactly back in the exact pixels that you passed the first time. Um, so just be careful about how you use it. If you get too gratuitous, you'll erode the details. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.